How banks create money is a really interesting topic to look at. Banks create money by creating loans. And one of these loans is using a credit card. When you use a credit card, you're taking out an instant loan. Let's say, for example, that we have an economy with me, uh, the company Amazon. We both use two different banks. My bank balance is $100. Amazon's bank balance is also $100. But let's say that I buy $20 worth of stuff from Amazon. What happens? And keep in mind, this is using my credit card. All that happens is that $20 gets deposited into Amazon's checking account. If you take a quick look, in the beginning we had in the economy a total amount of $200. But now, if we take a look, my bank balance is still $100. But Amazon's bank balance has increased by $20. So the new total money in the economy is $220. I've not actually used my money to pay for my purchase from Amazon. That is a loan that's been used to pay Amazon. But money has still been created. We have more money in the economy now than we used to. So money has been created by making this loan. A limitation of creating new money is the monetary base. And the monetary base is the sum of the central bank's notes and the bank's deposits. The size of the monetary base limits the quantity of money that the banking system can create. Banks have a desired level of reserves, and households and firms have a desired holding of currency. Both of these desired holdings of the monetary base depend on the quantity of deposits. The desired reserves are the reserves that a bank plans to hold. The required reserves, on a side note, are the minimum quantity of reserves that the bank must hold as regulated by the government. The desired reserve ratio is the ratio of reserves to deposits that the bank wants to hold. This ratio exceeds the required reserve ratio by the amount that the bank wants. It's up to the bank how much extra reserves they want to keep. Desired currency holding is the proportion of money held as currency and bank deposits. Ratio of currency to deposits, that's essentially what it is. At any given time, this ratio is fixed. It depends on if households want to make payments using currency or debit cards and checks. Um, if bank deposits increase, and the desired currency holding also increases. Thus, when banks make loans that increase deposits, some currency leaves the bank and the banking system leaks reserves. This is known as currency drain. Currency drain is the leakage of bank reserves into currency. And the currency drain ratio is the ratio of currency to deposits. How money is created, the whole process. This is a little bit complicated, so I've tried to simplify this as much as I can. The money creation process begins with an increase in the monetary base. If this occurs, if the central bank conducts open market operations, for example, an open market purchase in this example, it pays for securities with newly created bank reserves. When the central bank purchases securities from a bank, that charter bank's deposits don't change, but the bank has excess reserves. It's excess reserves are its actual reserves minus its desired reserves. When a bank has excess reserves, it makes loans and creates deposits. When the entire banking system has excess reserves, total loans and deposits increase and the quantity of money increases. If the quantity of money increases um, due to these loans being created, then we have new deposits that are made and these people who have borrowed money, they make payments. So that money that has just been loaned has been put right back into bank accounts. Two things can happen from here. We can have some of that money going off into currency drain. We can have some people taking out that money and holding it as cash. And the rest of that money can remain on deposit. That money that remains on deposit actually increases excess reserves. Though desired reserves also increase, we still have an increase in excess reserves. And since we have an increase in excess reserves, banks lend again, the quantity of money increases again, and the entire cycle repeats itself. The money multiplier is the ratio of the change in the quantity of money to the change in the monetary base. The smaller the bank's desired reserve ratio, the smaller is the currency drain ratio, and the larger the money multiplier. The money multiplier essentially tells us what an increase in the monetary base that was created by the central bank, by how much it's actually going to increase the total quantity of money. It can be calculated 
as simply the amount of money divided by the monetary base. Or we can take, as you can see on screen, one, we can add the currency drain ratio onto that, and we can divide that by the sum of the reserve ratio plus the currency drain ratio. In essence, the money supply will increase by more than the change in the monetary base. It's kind of like the GDP multiplier, and we're going to get to that in a later lecture.